on no false church. <laughs> it was like the preachers out there, what they going to tell us? Yeah. One brother said, my father's a preacher. I just bought him a case of beer before I came here. My Lord. <laughs> my Lord, my They Lord. said, but you, Pastor Jennings, you're the first man we ever seen on TV who's from the hood. Mm. And I'm from the hood too, brother. That's right. I'm not so holy where folks say, I'm saved. I don't know how to hold my hands. Oh, I still know how to hold my hands. <laughs> That's right. Just by biblical law, I'm not allowed to use them. That's so right. I use them a different way. Old Testament and New Testament. <laughs> <laughs> huh? That's right. Are you listening? Amen. When I see my young brothers and sisters Hallelujah. out here gang banging, yes. drunk, drunk, cussing, yeah. have no respect for age. Mm -hmm. Fail to realize there's a scripture that hangs over the head of all creation. Right. Jesus said you shall reap what you sow. Let's itemize that. Amen. Look at what you sowed upon others. That's right. Be not deceived. Listen, give chapter and verse. In the book of Galatians chapter 6 and at verse 7. Parliament. Be not deceived. Don't be tricked. God is not mocked. God, you don't play with God. That's, for whatsoever a man soweth. Whatever. A man put forth. That shall he also reap. To make it more plain, if you plant watermelon seeds, don't look for donuts to come out the ground. That's right. Watermelon seeds, watermelon. Watermelon. Plant squash, squash. Yeah. Plant rutabagas, rutabagas. That's what's coming. That's right. And that woman make that pound cake and put it in the oven. Don't look in there expecting for a peach cobbler to come out. No. She didn't show that. That's right. Young brothers and sisters, look at the hatred, the foul mouths that you have. Foul mouths. Not respecting age. Yeah. Think of the young girl that you're trying to plot to run a train on. That's right. Think of the rape that you have done. Think of the stealing that you have done. Yeah. And now look at what the scripture says. Be not deceived. Don't be tricked. God is not mocked. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows. Whatever a man sows. That shall he also reap. In street terms, what goes around, come around. That's right. What you do to someone's daughter by taking advantage of her and stripping her whatsoever. of her virginity against her will. Amen. Whatsoever. One day you may get married or commit fornication and have a child out of wedlock. That's right. But what comes around? What's your weather? daughter may end up being raped. That's right. Your son may end up being sodomized. Amen. Your house, your apartment might end up being burglarized. That's right. What is God doing? Allowing you to reap the same pain, same pain that you caused on mothers and fathers and sons and daughters with the attitude, I don't care. That's right. That's right. These preachers don't care about you. No. If these tele-evangelists cared about the people, they would not be afraid to tell them what's right, even if they got to lose their life in the process. A man of counsel will be considerate. What? In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 32 and verse 18. A man of counsel. Of counsel. Will be considerate. Will be considerate. But a strange and proud man. A strange and a proud man. Is not daunted with fear. Amen. Our young brothers and sisters, strange behavior. Strange. Proud, Proud. arrogant, self-righteous, self-centered. That's right. And have no fear. No fear. Amen. Don't fear God. And when you don't fear God, you don't respect him. That's right. When I came up, hey, we mix it up, best man win. <clears throat> Nobody threw a gun in their face when they got beat up. No. Young boys today can't hold their hands. That's why they put out the gun so quick. That's right. That's true. Are you listening? That's right. Lives now, they value their rims on the car. Yes. More than they do to life in the house. That's right. Sons try to rape their own sister. That's right. Sons 
cuss out their mother, cuss out their mother and, their father. and their father. And your behavior is in the Bible in long the, before you were born. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 30 and verse 10. The Lord saw the behavior of all humanity. Proverbs chapter 30 and at verse 11. Young brother, what are you going to do with yourself? Let's have a rap session. We're doing an international webcast tonight, and I'm not just talking to you. We're talking to the entire world. That's right. You that are watching, what you going to do with yourself? Bloods? Crips? Gangster disciples? Spanish mafia? Hmm. What are you going to do with yourself? What pride is it? What have you accomplished? Hmm. To firebomb somebody's house because they owe you $5. That's right. When did life get so cheap? That's right. That a man can influence you, young brother, 15, 16, 17 year old, in order for you to be accepted by your neighborhood gang. Amen. Your form of initiation, you gotta murder somebody. Yeah. You do it with pride. That's right. You gotta rape somebody's sister. You do it with pride. That's right. You gotta beat up an old man. You do it with pride. But God said. That's right. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth. What you putting out upon others. That shall he also reap. It's going to come back to you. For he that soweth to his flesh. Whoever sowed to his flesh. Shall of the flesh reap corruption. Mm. Are you listening? Amen. Pastor Jenna, I don't believe in God. Do you think that stopped God from being God? That's right. You may not believe the sun is starting to go down. Go out there and start yelling and get mad at the sun. I guarantee it won't, it won't get lighter. It won't get lighter. It's still going to get dark. That's right. I say that to say this. Every human that walked this earth, the color of your skin ain't worth a dime. Yeah. You must stand before your creator. Oh, yes. The same God that made you in the womb of your mothers. Yeah. You're going to stand before him. Stand before him. And you ain't going to be able to go to God. Hey, yo, what's up? What's up, God? Hey, hey what's up, dog? No, no. No way. Imagine the Lord that caused earthquakes in the world. That's right. That bring rain and demolish cities. Yep. The God who control life and grant death upon whosoever he will. That's right. It ain't a tough man on this planet tougher than God. No. So you may go to men, yo, oh, what's up, dog? But you ain't going to talk to God like that. No way. See, remember, Israel got rebellious. And they didn't want to hear Moses. I wanna, we want to hear God, Moses. We don't want to hear you. They came to the foot of the mountain. And then... Complaining that they want to hear God. The sound and the power of God went blasting through the heavens. Blasting. Thundering. Lightning. By the time Israel heard that, you know what they told Moses? Moses, we hear you. Oh, yeah. We're listening to you. Like, we, we don't, we don't want to hear that. We're, we're listening to you. That's right. But we're here now shaking us up, making us afraid. Making us afraid. You see, a lot of you don't have no fear. So the wisdom of God will bring something in your life that will give you worst fear you ever had. That's right. If you don't fear God, then you don't have fear. That's right. Because it is God and God alone who deserve our fear. Oh, yes. Are you listening? The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is what? Is the beginning of wisdom. So if you don't fear God, ask yourself, are you wise or are you stupid? That's right. That's right. You know how to pick the lock of a house. You know how to pick the lock of a car. You know how to unsnap that bra. Go ahead, man. You know how to drop your pants and spill unlawful seed. Go ahead. But do you know how to drop on your knees like a humble man and bow before your Lord? That's right. That's 
Knocking up girls don't make you no man. No, no. Making a bunch of babies don't make you a man. That's right. And yet you can't take care of one. That's right. Are you listening to the old troublemaker? Be not deceived. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. You don't play with God. That's right. In America, our young brothers, and when I say young brothers, I ain't focusing on black folk. No. I'm talking about young men of every color under the sun. Amen. The parents are taking them to the grave more than the children are taking the parents to the grave. That's right. Dying, Dying. over the stupid reasons. Yeah. Flash mobs come together in department stores, tearing them up, still in clothes. That's right. Beating up people. They had this thing in America, I don't know where they got it here, just walking up to strangers and slapping them or punching them in the face with all their might. Amen. And then they laugh about it. Yeah. When I came up and you got on public transportation on the city bus or the subway, if an elderly man or an elderly woman came on, I was raised, I'd get out my seat. Right. Let them sit down. That's right. I say to the elderly man, yes, sir. I say to the elderly woman, yes, ma'am. The day if a young person say to someone, yes, sir, and yes, ma'am, you know what they ask them? Are you from this country? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's Wait a minute, are you from this country? Where are you from? That's right. Because to them, that type of uh, intelligence is foreign. Oh. That type of hospitality is foreign. That's right. Young men and young women, God said, I've made you for my, my, for glory. my glory. All members of the human family were made and are made for God's glory. That's right. The teaching of holiness is to shape you and form you and fashion you in the original stage yeah. that God made Adam. That's right. yes. The original stage that God made man, man was spotless, man was holy, holy. man was upright yeah. before he ran up on Satan. Oh, yes. Since man had ran up on Satan, now man loved to be evil, loved Love to be wicked, love to be a liar, love to be a thief, right. love to be a sinner, love to take advantage of someone, love to do anything that's contrary to God's will. That's right. 30th chapter of the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 30 and at verse 11. Follow me. There is a generation that curseth their father. Do you hear it? Do you hear it? Do you hear it? There is a generation that curseth their There's father. There's a generation that cusses. Cuss. That cusseth their father. Many of these fathers today, God help them. Yes. They just make babies, then abandon the entire house. That's right. Mother is stuck to fend for herself. That's right. Had to work two and three jobs trying to raise five and six and seven children. Yeah. Raising boys and girls. I want to say to you children that got a mother for a single parent and she's working, putting food in your mouth and a roof over your head, you got to be a fool to disrespect that woman. That's right. Well, Pastor Jennings, you know, I'm 19 and uh, I appreciate what she done, but she gave me curfew. Here's the solution, young man. I want you to hear the old man. Now, here's the solution. Hmm. You're 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Nah. I really got a good remedy for your problem. Yeah. See, being at the house is not yours. Number one, it's your mother. Number two, you pay no bills whatsoever. That's right. Number three, if you want to come in any hour of the night, get up, get your own job, get your own place, make your own rules. Otherwise than that, respect the rules of that house. That's right. Your mother got a right to tell you she wants you home anytime she wants. Why? You under that roof. Amen. And out of respect, if you're out, have enough respect to call your mother. Amen. 
Let her know That's where right. you are and when you're coming home. That's right. And come home the same night. That's right. Don't make your house a hard work of your mother, a station stop. You go spend the night over Miss Sue House, Amen. the next night over Mary Jane, yes. the next night over Martha. Oh, yes. And three days, your mother looking for you, got to go down to the board to identify dead bodies that think mm. that's her son? That's right. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? There is a generation that cusseth their father. There is a generation that cusseth their father. That curse. Curseth their father. Father. And doeth not bless their mother. They don't bless their mama. Some mm. of the generation cursed their father because the father abandoned them. Yeah. Left everything on the woman. That's or right. left the whole family, and this is something I would never understand. How can many of you men watching me now can have a woman, get married, have about two, three, and four, and five children, abandon that entire family, and take care of some other woman Somebody. and her family? That's right. Hmm. How is that? How can you abandon your family while your wife is pregnant? Amen. And take care of some other woman. Some other woman. And her children. Amen. And then brag. You a man? You are not a man. No. In fact, I wouldn't even call you a dog because a dog take care of his pups. Right. That's right. <laughs> Are you listening to the old man? Amen. Young brothers and sisters. Yeah. Making babies is not a game. No. It's no great thing. There was a young brother on CNN. Think of it. He was 33 mm. at the time the interview took place and had 30 kids. <laughs> now, he didn't start when he was three now. <laughs> but just think of it. He was being interviewed. He was 33 years old at the time and had 30 kids. My Lord. At one time, they asked him, how many women did you have pregnant at one time? He was laughing. He said, about 11. He had 11 kids, 11 women pregnant at one time. My Lord. So the question was, do you take care of all of them? He said, oh, yeah, the government, you know, they take an X amount out, out of my check. The reporter said, how much do they take? Oh, each one get 35 cents. What? And he's laughing. My he's Lord. Laughing. 35 cents? Can you imagine such? My Lord. They have no shame. No shame. No shame. Young sisters. Don't let no man, no boy who think he's a man, mm -hmm. lay some good rap on you and show you a wad of money, and that's all he got to do is show you money and your clothes disappear. That's right. That's clothes, right. Are, clothes almost make the sound of a cartoon. Money, pew! Amen. <laughs> all right, listen. Amen. We're living in a time now where many young men are not interested no, in taking care of no children. No. Are you listening? That's right. Young women that already have a child or children, don't ever lose your dignity for a man that you have pushed your child or children aside. That's right. Who was already here before you met this fellow. Amen. You don't push your son or your daughter aside because some man complain them, complaining. Complain. You move him in with you, which is wrong because he ain't your husband. Right. And he sweet talk you. Look, won't you do something with your daughter? Won't you do something with your son? Mm. He claimed he's hungry again. I need time. I'm ready for the. I'm ready to get laid. Mm. Well, my son is crying. Let the so and so cry. Yeah. Well, at least let me stop him from crying. Go stop him from crying and hurry up and get back here. Mm. So besides feeding him, 
You give him a pacifier to suck on. Yes. Child cry 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. You getting knocked up by some worthless fella. And then he jump up. I'm tired of hearing that boy crying. You go in there and do something or I do something. That's right. So you let this trash in your house Wait a minute. Wait a minute, yeah. and play with your body My Lord. and put your children on a back burner because you're scared to lose this piece of trash. So he is so frustrated with your child crying because the child is hungry. He grabbed your daughter and grabbed your son and shake it. That's right. Until the child now is dead and you are a contributing factor right. to that murderer. That's right. That's right. That's why the preachers in America is trying to get us off the air. Yeah. Because we deal with every subject. Oh, yes. Why? The Bible instructs me to preach everything. Everything. Where's that at, Pastor Jennings? Give me the book of Acts of the Apostles. When the apostles were delivered out of prison by Acts. the power of God, as God sent an angel, and listen at what the angel told the apostles. Acts chapter 5 and at verse 20. Follow me. Go stand and speak in the temple. Go stand. And speak in the temple. And speak. In the temple. In the temple. To the people. How much shall we tell them? All the words of this life. My job is to tell you everything. That's right. All the words of this life. Amen. I thank God to have so many men. I'm folk thought I'm a, I was a Muslim. <laughs> because they see women on one side, men on the other. And most churches don't hardly have no men. If the church got a thousand. 997 of them is probably all women <laughs> and only three men and they ain't got no spine. Amen. God said, let us make man. Make man. What is your definition of a man? Yeah. Let's, let's have a rap session tonight. Yeah. What's your definition of a man? One raise their hand at a time. Brothers, talk to you. What is your definition of a man? What's a man? What's a man to you? Yes, brother. A man who obeys God. Who else? Provides. One that provides. Provide what? Safety. Safety. All right. What else? Keep God first. Keep God first. What else? Fear God. Fear God. What else? Take care of the children. What else? Now, fear God, put God first, provide safety, take care of children. All good ingredients. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Be responsible. Be responsible. Now, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27 says, So God created man. So God created man. In his own image. In his own image. In the image of God created he him. Now hold it. Let us not look at the image of God only as man's shape, man's form, man's fashion, man's image, man's figure. God's image also is God's character. That's right. You can have the shape of a man, the fashion of a man, but have the character of a beast. That's right. For the apostle Paul said, I fought with beasts at Ephesus after the manner of men. Mm -hmm. So here you got a man with God's shape, God form, God fashion, but got the characteristics of a dog. That's right. That's right. Which means he's disrespectful, no good, rotten to the core. Rotten. He won't take care of his children unless he's responsible. That's right. Now, how you, do you define taking care of your children? children. Providing food, one way. Providing a roof, one way. Provide, uh, providing clothes, one way. But are you providing counsel? Mm. Amen. All right, listen. Amen. You could get food from the Red Cross. <laughs> That's right. You can get food from the Salvation Army. That's right. The fathers must be mentally and emotionally equipped 
to give counsel. Sometimes counsel come and it's not verbalized. Yeah. The loudest speech is when nothing is said because most behavior of a child is learned behavior through observation. That's right. How in the world are you gonna chastise your child for cussing? And every cuss word they learn, they learn it at home. Yeah. You don't criticize your children from coming in drunk and their first shot of beer was out your refrigerator. That's right. Son, you smoking? Don't be shocked. He learned it from you, daddy Dang. or mama. Every counselor extolleth counsel. Do you hear? Do the, you hear? In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 37 and verse 7. What is it? Every counselor extolleth counsel. Every counselor extolleth, extolleth counsel. counsel. But there is some that counseleth for himself. There are some that counseleth for himself. Beware of a counselor. <laughs> Beware of an advisor. And know before what need he hath. For he will counsel for himself. What do you mean? <laughs> Some men give you counsel, but they don't give you the right counsel. The right counsel. They give you counsel or advice where they will benefit, but not you. That's right. What do you mean? You get an old head in the hood that you admire, and he see you don't have no money. Mm -hmm. So he take you under his dirty wings. That's right. To do what? Give you counsel. Give you counsel. But the counsel is not good. That's right. Because the counsel he gave you is what made you a car thief today. Yeah. What made you sell drugs today. Right. What got you beating up girls. Yeah. What got you trying to sodomize little boys. What got you carjacking. So all counsel is not good counsel. That's right. Good counsel when you shape and mold my character that I may reflect God in the way I walk, the way I talk, the way I think. That's right. When I'm able to reflect God, then I can say, yes, I was made in God's image. God's image. Are you getting what I'm talking? Beware of a counselor. Beware. Blessed be the name of God of a counselor. a counselor. And know before what need he has. Know before. Know what type, what type. of counselor that's right. counseling you. For he will counsel for himself. Oh, he will counsel for himself. He's selfish. Lest he he just want to profit from what he teach you. That's right. You know, like a lot of you young brothers and sisters that are watching now, you in jail. Yeah. The one who you did the work for didn't get arrested. That's right. You're the pawn. Yeah. You're the one in jail for carjacking, not the one that you carjacked for. That's right. You're the one in jail for shooting. The gang members that put you out there, they ain't in jail. That's right. You're the one in jail for rape, not the one that hired you to go rape. Yeah. So the wicked counselor the sit wicked, back. Wicked counselor. And use you, man. Okay. I hate to say this about our brothers, but it's true. Many of our young brothers are used by neighborhood gang members just like a pimp use a whore. Amen. A pimp don't mean no girl no good. So look at the language you learn and look at what you call your little son now. You got a little son or one or two, three little sons and you ain't married or maybe you are married. But look at the street language you call your son. You introduce them. They ask you, that's your son? That's my little pimp. Amen. What else do you present him or introduce him as? That's my little dog. Yeah. Think of it. Your son now is a dog who eats who eat garbage and eat his own vomit, mm -hmm. and you call your son pimp, meaning you are teaching him the language of a womanizer. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. Why don't you use the words of the Heavenly Father? Right. This is my beloved son. That's right. Why you have to degrade your son? And why do you degrade yourself, brother, that you answer to your friends? Yo, what's up, pimp? Ain't nothing pimping, brother. Ain't nothing happening. You a pimp? A pimp. Yo, what's up, dog? Roof, 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 man. Amen. You're a dog? What kind of dog are you? What kind of trash do you eat? Yeah. See, I can tell you eat trash when I hear you talk yeah. because the trash come out your mouth. Many of you young brothers, young sisters can't even complete one sentence without cussing. 
That's right. Somebody may just ask you a plain question. Hey, man, how you feeling? Oh, man, I'm feeling MF good. Nobody asked you all that. That's right. I just asked you, how you feeling? How you feeling? You mean to tell me your vocabulary is so jacked up and your mind is so warped? Look how you go to an interview. Shirt tail hanging out with a necktie on. Pants hanging down below your behind with a belt. That's right. You know you can't walk right. The pants is below your behind with a belt, and you come for the interview walking like this. Uh, <laughs> amen. Hands between your legs, pulling up your crouch That's while right. you're being interviewed. That's right. That's you see, right. the preachers think something wrong with me. They write something is wrong. I was filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I was made a minister. Oh, yes. Are you listening? Amen. So you go to an interview, and he asks you, well, Mr. Simmons, tell me about yourself. Oh, well, it's like this, dog. Wait, ho, ho, wait a minute. Now you, you're talking to the company you're trying to get in. It's like this, dog. You see, you understand what I'm saying? Now remember, before you ask someone, do you understand what I'm saying, you first got to say something. <laughs> That's right. All right? Sure. So we done added this quote to our everyday language. language. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, uh, yeah, well, you know, I do a little, little, tell me about it. I do a little this, I do a little that. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Never told them what was this. What is Never it? told them what was that. Right. And many of our young men, a lot of them are brilliant, yeah. smart, intelligent. But you won't even finish high school to get your education. Amen. Because you admire the car that drug dealer drives. That's right. You admire the house that he got through bloodshed. That's right. You love the fact to look at the rappers on television with a bunch of girls strapped naked and shaking their behinds, and then that same drug dealer want to post a sign, Black Lives Matter. Liar. Liar. I know well black lives going to matter when you're using abusing young girls just like a pimp do horse. That's right. Are you listening to the old troublemaker? Beware of a counselor. Beware of a counselor. Oh, we're going out of this convention with an explosion here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. My young brothers and sisters, you need to change. Yeah. The governments of America and Europe are building more and more prisons. Oh, yes. The prison system now is a privatized industry. Yeah. That means this. Just say if I own land and I want to start a business. Mm -hmm. If I own land, I can subcontract that land, get a prison built. If the prison is built to hold 3,000. Mm -hmm. And I own this prison now. The government is making, depending upon what state, the government makes off some inmates three, four, five, six hundred dollars per inmate. My Lord. So, Imagine 3,000 young men, middle aged and old, mm. in jail. And I own this prison, making $600 per person. My Lord, my Lord. Do you really think I want you to stop committing crime? <laughs> no way. The reason why the prison system is growing, because the politicians and the hypocritical governments of the world hope no crime stop. Many of your politicians, many of your men That's that right. work on parliament are private prison owners themselves. That's right. Yes. Some of the NBA players, former NBA players in America, own prisons. My Lord, my Lord. Mm. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. My Lord. Three, four, five, six hundred dollars per inmate. Per inmate. And I'm getting paid that mm. every week mm. per inmate. Per 
Amen. That's why ungodly policemen find it so easy to set young men and some women up. That's right. Innocent in jail. And then 35 years later, oh, it come up, you innocent, as if you didn't know it 35 years ago. Amen. You done took 35 years of my life. Yeah. You done, you done made 35 years of money off my existence. Off your existence. Every inmate that they realize is innocent should sue them. That's of right. all the money they made off of them all those years. All those years. America, Europe, and all these countries are crooked, evil, and they're guided by the power of Satan. Amen. That's why, and now, even though we are able to worship God freely, even that is threatened That's by the right. governments of the world. That's right. Now the governments want to dictate how you worship. Yeah. Oh, yes, look at what Hitler done in Berlin yeah. and throughout Germany. Oh, yeah. He exterminated Jewish brothers and sisters. He took the crosses off all churches and replaced them with a swastika. That's right. He sent out a decree for all Bibles, all religious books to be burned. Burned. Amen. And you know who sided with Hitler? I cannot think of the name of the Pope of that era. But the Pope of that era was working along with Hitler. Mm. And some of the big time multi-millionaire Jewish families was helping financing Hitler during the time of his stir extermination quest. And one of those families was the Rothschilds. Mm. This is documented, documented historical fact. Amen. Wow. Blood suckers. Blood. Mm. This is what the Bible means, that the love of money is the root or the source of all evil. Oh. You will kill your family just to make money. That's right. And that same attitude is in the neighborhoods of the day. Yeah. They have killed their brother. They have killed their father. They hook up with the drug dealer, and the drug dealer say, hey, look, if you kill your father because he's bothering me, oh, yeah. kill him. Kill and him. I give you $10,000. Yeah. Really? really? Yeah, I give you $10,000. Amen. He goes skipping to his father. That's right. How did you get like this? How did you get like this? You were made in God's image, and the only thing you have that identify your creation is your shape, form, and fashion. But your mindset and your heart is wicked. Wicked. And these men that claim they are religious leaders ain't nothing but pimps, hypocrites, and religious thieves sent by the devil to waste your time and use religion as a front and lead you straight into hell. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 32 and verse 17. That's what? A sinful man. Listen. A sinful man. A sinful man. Will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse. Wait a minute. A sinful man will not be corrected. That's what, when you reprove, you're being corrected. Corrected. A sinful man will not be reproved, but what does he do? But findeth an excuse. He will find an excuse. According to his will. I ain't down with that. I don't agree with that. I don't believe that Bible. I believe the Bible was written by a bunch of old white men yeah. who ain't had nothing to do but waste time. Now look how stupid you sound. <laughs> Is everybody all right? Amen. Amen. If you ain't, that's your problem, buddy. That's right. Let me put your mind to work. You that think the Bible is written by a bunch of old white men that had long beards and that had nothing to do but write and drink wine and get high. <laughs> Let's first look at man. Yeah. It is not man's nature to want to be holy. No way. Number one, no man will write a religious book that take fun from him. That's right. I don't care if he's white, black, brown, old or young. That's right. That old man, well, he want to have fun. He want to have he fun. He see that girl out there, he's out there. Uh, I remember when I was your age. He'll come to you. What, what your name? He'll look at you and say, oh, glory to God. What's your name? Just look at the church you come from. That old sloppy mouth bishop you had, always looking at you up and down and complimenting your weight, shaking your hand, rubbing your back like he's your personal masseuse. Yeah. 
Am I right? That's right. In the book of Job, chapter 15 and verse 16. What is that? How much more abominable? How much more abominable? And filthy. And dirty. Is man. I told you. Which drinketh iniquity. He drank iniquity. Like water. <laughs> Amen. That means he's thirsty for wickedness. Right. Oh, yeah. So no man of no race took it upon himself to write the Bible. The Bible holds you hostage. Oh, the hostage. Bible demands order. God gave Israel commandments. God gave the apostles commandments. That's right. You come along and it is written in the first chapter of the book of Acts. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Uh, after that, give me that. In Acts, the first chapter of the book of Acts of the Apostles. Acts chapter 1, we'll start at verse 1. Be quick. The former treaties have I made, treaties, have Theophilus, I made O Theophilus, of all that Jesus, began both, that that Jesus began both to do and to teach until, until the day, the day in which he was taken up. After that, after that he, through, he the Ghost, through the Spirit had given commandments. He did what? Had given commandments. He gave all Unto the apostles. Whom he had chose. He had now, chose. the Bible have orders. It's, it's orders. And ain't no man under the sun. Oh. Let me give you an example. Seventh chapter of First Corinthians, verse 1. Verse 1. I'm approved to you. Uh, ain't no man just jumped up and write the Bible. That's right. I'm First, about to read you something that no man will write. First Corinthians? <laughs> That's right. It ain't a man in the world will write on his own accord what I'm about to read. First Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. First Corinthians? Chapter 7. Chapter 7. And verse 1. Glory to God, verse 1. Listen at this. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me. Concerning the things that ye wrote unto me. It is good. It is good. For a man not to touch a woman. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And the reason why he wrote that was what? Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Avoid it? A avoid fornication. <laughs> avoid it? Avoid fornication. Avoid it? Avoid you fornication. You know there ain't no man gonna write that. No it way. It is good not, not to touch. Not to touch a woman. Now what man will agree to that and say, I ain't touching no woman? That's right. How many of you here want to touch a woman? Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. Say it louder than that. Yeah. Why give me a hoorah? Yes. Glory to God. <laughs> That's right. You going to tell me a bunch of old white, you a peer? You a pe Are you that stupid? stupid? It ain't a bunch of white men write this. It ain't a bunch of black men write this. No, no. When man wrote, he was not of himself. That's right. Give me the book of the Apostle Peter. Give Se me the book of Peter. Second Peter Follow chapter me. one. I'm going to show you how this is written. And then I want Paul who show us the reason why it was written. All scriptures. That's right. All right, son. Let's listen at this. Second Peter chapter one. We'll start at verse 20. Then we'll go back to the book of Corinthians. This is good tonight. Amen. Knowing this first. Knowing this first. That no prophecy of the scripture. Knowing this first. No prophecy. No oh. statement. No prophecy of scripture. Is of any private interpretation. Came by man's own personal views or man's personal feelings. But so the, when you find these prophets today popping up. Oh the Lord told me the world going in and find more. Don't pay them old liars. No mind. Don't pay them no mind. Church as you go to the preacher come up. Oh the Lord spoke to me. The Lord spoke to me. Halalah satalala tabarabat potato salad. <laughs> That's right. The Lord said there's $10,000 in the house, $10,000 in the house. Shandala, 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 get a Hyundai. <laughs> Amen. 
Have you noticed these hypocrites only speak in tongue when it's money time and church? That's, that's right. Have you waked up yet? That's right. Oh, we'll take God. Did you hear this? Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture uh -huh. is of any private interpretation. What happened? For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. Do you hear this? Amen. Prophecy didn't come by the will of man. Many no prophecy came by a man personal feelings, by a man personal views, by a man personal nothing. But holy men of God. What spake. kind? Holy men. What kind? Holy men. High men. Holy men. Drunken men. Holy men. Holy men of God spake. For how? As they were moved by the Holy Ghost. They spake how? As they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of God, the power of God, the characteristics of God, the function of God. That's right. So God, through his divine, everlasting, infallible, perfect wisdom, moved on men Amen. to write the book. That's it. And they wrote what he wanted in that. That's right. And ain't no man gonna say, it is good. good what, what Corinthians says? Uh, 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 1. Ain't no man going to say that. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. You see, the Apostle Paul, when he wrote that, he was in the spirit. Amen. Huh? Amen. He in the spirit. That's right. I don't care how many women walk by, he's in the spirit. He oh, ain't. oh, yeah. Nah, we got to erase that. <laughs> <laughs> We got to erase that and write something else. No, sir. No. Glory no. to God. Holy men of God. What speak. kind? Holy men of God. Blessed speak. be the name of God. Holy men of God. Speak of they, they were moved, moved by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. Now, let's see what the Apostle Paul says. 2 Timothy chapter 3, we're at verse 16. Everybody all right? Amen. Follow me. Listen at this. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. What is it? All scripture. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. All scriptures are given how? By inspiration of God. That means God inspired men. Men didn't talk on their own. Men didn't write on their own. The eternal God that made the heavens and the earth and that same God that moved upon the face of the deep was the same God that moved on man. That's right. Man didn't have to know what God was going to say. Man didn't have to know nothing. All God did was come upon him and make him start writing. That's right. That's right. Put him in the spirit. That's right. Make him start writing until he's not even aware what he write. Amen. Ain't no man write what's against him. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. See, that's why you folk go to religions that God is, didn't inspire. That's why you like to be a Mormon. Yeah. God ain't inspired no Mormon. You can get all the meat you want. That's like right. a neighborhood butcher. Amen. Get all the wives you want. That's why them preachers, that's why them preachers in the Mormon religion, the so-called Church of Jesus Christ, are Latter-day Devils. Latter-day Devils. 39, 40, 50, 60, 70 wives. Amen. And then get up and say, the Lord is dealing with me now to have another one. No, you're just a pimp. <laughs> that's all. It's just a religious pimp. That's right. Here now. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And what was it given for? And it's profitable for doctrine. Your doctrine will profit mm -hmm. when it comes from scripture. From scripture. What else? For reproof. You are reproved from the scripture to correct the life you live contrary to the scripture. For correction. It comes to correct your lifestyle. For instruction it in righteousness. come to instruct you in the way how to live right. That the man of God. You may need be a perfect. man of God to do this. That, that the man of God may be perfect. Not some old backward collars, one that you call reverend. Right. Reverend chicken wing and reverend chicken bone. <laughs> That's right. Now this manicured nails and a big chain around his neck like he's a miniaturized version of Mr. T. Amen. Come on back to Bible. Amen. When you come back to the Bible, God will clean you up. Yes, he will. Clean you up. Amen. Yes, he will. Our young men won't be wearing their hair long like girls. Like girls. Come on, Pastor Jenny, you don't know what's up. I know what's up. God is. <laughs> Amen. My job is to bring you the wisdom of God that will make you look like a man. That's right. When a man walk down the aisle and I see the back of him, I should not think, uh, that's Manny. That's right. I should know that's Mr. That's Mr. All right, give me the book of 1 Corinthians, Corinthians now, chapter, chapter 11. 11 and verse 14. Says what? Doeth not even nature itself Doeth teach you? Doeth not good sense teach you that if a that man, if a man have long have hair, have long hair? It is a shame. What? It is a shame. No, it's the style. It is a shame. And make him a man. It is a shame. How? Unto him. Amen. 
I want to say, oh, wait a minute, Pastor Jennings, then why did Samson hair grow? Well, God allowed Samson hair to grow because in the Old Testament, he was born under the law of Nazarite. Right. Amen. And the Nazarite hair grew and a razor wouldn't come upon his head. Right. And not only that, God did not allow him to eat certain things. That's right. As long as he was under that vow. But when that vow was broken, thank God he can go back and eat and also get the locks of his hair cut. Cut. Now God says a shame. It is a shame for We're not man. under the Old Testament vow no more. No. Are you listening? That's right. So God allows Samson here to grow. Amen. And look at the, uh, when Delilah got him, she changed his whole hairstyle. His hairstyle. <laughs> huh? That's right. Amen. So some of you fellas, they got all this long hair. Want your hair to grow long like a girl, and you want to wear a man bun. Have you not realized and have you not waked up yet, brothers, hmm. that society is making our men more and more feminine? That's right. Do you not see it? That's right. You want to wear booty shorts. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And you want to wear jeans showing your underwear. Now, wait a minute. Just, just, just let's have a brief rap session because I got a flight to catch early in the morning back to America. But while I got you here, brother, I'm going to give you body blows that you will never forget. <laughs> you got your pants hanging down, showing your drawers, showing your behind. Just tell me, are you a neighborhood hoe or what? Mm. Just tell me. Because a man that's a real man ain't advertising his booty. It is not his duty to advertise his booty. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but you say you're a man. Yeah. Please tell me, where's the pride that you're showing your draws to the public? Yeah. Look at it from this perspective. How would you feel if your mama mm. or your sister came outside with just a blouse mm. and then got her panties on? And the blouse is just short enough to show her panties. Right. And she's ready to go out the door. You'll be like, hey, 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 mama, where you going? That's right. Mama, where you going? What are you going out here like that for? Well, don't you worry about why I'm going like that. I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to do the town. Hey, wait, mama, where the rest of your clothes? I don't need no clothes. And she walk out the door. <laughs> That's right. Every man that whistle at your mama cheeks, you'll be ready to fight and cuss. Yeah. Tell me, are you a hood from a hooker from the hood? Yeah. I ain't never thought I would see our young boys want to show your behind show you like you some male whore. Amen. And you bragging what part of the hood you came from? The hood I came from, no butt was showing. That's right. That's right. Mm -mm. Man, you let some fella come and rock around us like that. We be like, hey, yo, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Pull your pants up. And if he say, I ain't pulling nothing up, an old head, he be like, what you say? <laughs> when that old head, old head walk to you, his shoulder swaying, <laughs> he letting right. you know, I'm going to hit you here. I'm going to hit you there. <laughs> How did you get like this? Get like this. Who inspired you? Did Ice Cube inspire you? Mm. Did Snoop Dogg inspire you? Lord. Did a rapper out there inspire you? My Lord, my Lord. What is intelligent? What is respectable about showing your naked behind? Yeah. A dog got a tail. It even drops its tail to hide its private parts. That's right. You show yours with no pride, no with pride. all pride. And our young girls, good Lord have mercy. Yeah. What you wear is like walking the street naked. <coughs> you coughing over, you all right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't see nobody, Fast. do you? Fast. Glory to God. You all right now? <laughs> all right, Pastor. Our young sisters and throughout the world, you come out here with these pants so short, whatever is in the pants is out of the pants. That's right. Am I right, I say? Yeah. Whatever is in them 
It's just like nothing is in them. It's out. Yeah. You wear blouses so deep it shows your cleavage. And then when you're out in the street or in church and somebody, some fella looking at you, you want to act like you're ashamed. <laughs> oh, what's she looking at? Wait, 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 wait. Well, Pastor Jenny, he shouldn't be looking at me. He in church. I agree. And you shouldn't be showing him because you in church. That's right. That's right. Your breast is not made for public eyes. No. The Bible said that the shame of your nakedness should be covered. But again, you go in these churches today, <laughs> you think you're in a club. Preacher's wife look like a regular neighborhood prostitute. That's right. You don't know whether to talk to her or whether to pay her. Mm. This is how sick churches has become. Oh, yes. And the entertainment industry are a big influence now on religion. And the Satan is using entertainment as a very seductive tool. Oh, That's yeah. why you find sinners when they come to church and the choir is singing, even the sinners like, oh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, man, they, they, this church is down, man. The, right. the sinners behind the pews. <laughs> oh, man, this, this church is rocking. This church is smoking. That's right. But when that choir sang something sanctified and holy, the sinner don't know whether to clap or what. He's like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what to do. Yeah. But he go to his friend's church, he's doing the same dance on Sunday that he just done all day Friday and all day Saturday night. That's right. Next time I come here, some of you young people may not be living. Mm. A bullet may come to your head. Oh, yeah. You may get robbed in the street and your body's laying there bleeding. Mm. Because murder today is done just as common as lighting up a cigarette. Because there is no value for life and they don't respect God. Young brothers and sisters and middle aged and old. The knowledge of God is the most valuable thing you will learn in this life. One day, brothers and sisters, you're going to die. The undertaker can make you look as beautiful as he think. And the preacher can say all the nice words that he chooses. There is no man that have the last say over no person. The one that had the last say is God himself. God himself. Get on God's side and come off the streets of Europe. That's it. Repent of your sins. Be sorry about the way you live. Be sorry about your disrespect you brought to God and your mother and your father and your children and the disrespect you bring to yourself. That's right. Be sorry about it. Sorry. Have some remorse in your heart for being so wicked and evil. That's right. The word of God tells us to do what? Then in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent. I know some of you went to some old church and they told you bow your head and raise your hands and accept Christ as your personal savior. And you've done it and then you thought you were saved. Yeah. He knows you're not saved. No. You're not even safe. <laughs> Preacher told you to hold a preacher's hand and pray a sinner's prayer and no such prayers in the Bible. You went to some Catholic church and he sprinkled you. I often say he throw water on you, throw it back on him. That's right. Being sprinkled is not in the scriptures. The Bible required that your whole body go in water. What shall we say then? The Bible said in the sixth chapter of Romans, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know you not that so many of us as was baptized and that Jesus Christ was baptized into his death? Therefore we are Therefore buried Therefore we him. are buried. Buried. The whole body go down. Buried with him. By baptism, By baptism into, death. into death. That like as Christ was raised up Just from like the dead. Just like Christ when he came back from the, the dead. Glory of the Father. By the power of God. Even so, we also should we walk also in should newness walk. of life. God wants you to have a new life. New life. Repent of your sins. Men, women, boy, girl of all ages. That's right. And get on God's side and get a Bible salvation. Not this bowed head, raising hands and sinner prayers and joining churches. Yeah. Making a confession to a priest who should be confession to God. That's it. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you. How much? Every, Every one of you. Every last one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. If you don't have it like this, you ain't never been saved and you've never been baptized right. That's right. How many here want to be right with God? 